off the court. I'll wait here for Jim. saving some nickels and dimes to get some new tennis balls. They tried to swipe our money. In broad daylight? I tried to fight them off. It was me against ten. They even slammed the window on my arm. I tried to yell for the police. That's when they chased me. All right, you and me. We'll go back and settle this. Oh, no. They said they'd kill me if I turned them in. Just drop me off at the bridge. Look, kid, I'll help you, but you can't let people get away with things like this. License, please. Hey, you're one of the Rat Pack. These are the guys that robbed that kid. Just give me the license, please. I don't seem to be getting through to you. License. Well, I had it. Uh, I know I had it. Uh, just a minute ago, when I turned around to look at you, I could feel it against the... The kid. Nobody uh, slammed a window on his arm, and nobody stole the tennis ball fund. Well, if we catch him, we'll try and get your wallet back to you. You better give me your name and address. Todd Stiles, Viking Marina Inn. <laughs>
Miles. First name's Evan. Surname Corelli, your choice. It occurs to me I never shook hands before with anybody who was left-handed. Oh. Well, what did you think of him? Who? Why did you assume that I was left-handed? Well, you put out your left hand. Oh, it's conclusions. See, actually, I'm right-handed. What did I think of whom? I don't get a vacation this year. Too much work. So I'm taking two weeks in a left-handed culture. Sort of a trip to Patagonia. The boy, this morning. Did you catch him? You also assume that I'm a cop? City County Welfare. A right-handed social worker. Couldn't tell, could you? Well, you have an unusual approach. What did I think of him? He looked hungry, he needed a haircut, a new pair of pants, and a hickory stick across his bottom. Let's say he comes around again. What do you do? Grab him, shake my wallet out, and whistle for the cops. Once more. What do you do? Call you? That's right. I would appreciate it. Who is this kid? His name is Joby Paxton. Male Caucasian, age 13, height 411, weight 85 pounds. No scars, no deformities, no parents. What makes you think I'll see him again? Well, if I know Joby, He's got you tagged as a mark, a pigeon. Either that or something much more. Like what? Well, there's no point laying it out in advance. It might spoil it. That's all right, I don't mind. I don't mean for you, for him. My home number's on the card. Any hour, day or night, okay? another possibility. 15,000 million years from now, the sun, having exhausted its stock of hydrogen, will relapse towards the status of a white dwarf. It's possible it will then pass through the nova stage. In this event, the Earth and all the other planets will be vaporized. At any rate, their outer layers will melt. The consequences for anything still living at that time would be catastrophic. But whether the end is to be refrigeration or ignition, the future span of life on Earth would appear to be limited at most to 10 to the 10th power years. Roughly 100 billion years yet to come.
Which is it, a mark and a pigeon, or something more? Go ahead, check it. What did Corelli want? Why did you take my wallet? Pretty corny story about the clubhouse, wasn't it? And see, you deserve better. But at the time, I was short of breath. Those guys chased me for blocks. You can't think your best when oxygen leaves your brain. How else was I going to know who you were? How else could I come and say thanks? So thanks. And what did Corelli want? A call. Any time of the day or night. Would you send up two hamburgers and two chocolate milkshakes, please? I gotta get going. I uh, can't eat both hamburgers myself. I'm not a bird, mister. I'll try and put salt on my tail. Just in case you're planning to call Corelli as soon as I leave. By the time he gets here, I'll be three miles away. Okay, Joby, no salt, no Corelli. See you around, huh? Why do grown-ups, most of them anyway, always feel sorry for kids? Paint the room tomorrow, Miss McKay. You can move in Wednesday. We're glad to have you with us. children in the house. You can't expect everyone to love children. Susie, can you see me? Behind the chair. <laughs> Guess again. Under the bed. Susie. Mrs. Connell says you can throw your voice in the cave and it comes back. That's an echo. Joby, can you see an echo coming back? 
Why should you see an echo if you can't see a voice? Come on out. You came earlier last night. Hold still, I got something to talk about. Tell me about our cat. Told you about that old cat 10,000 times. It's not what I want to talk about. No, Joby, tell me. I met a man today. He may be the one. He may not. But I got this feeling, you know, Susie? I'll cry if you don't tell me about the cat. Go ahead and cry. Just tell me about the part how he made the noise when he drank milk. With his tongue. He had a tongue like sandpaper. He'd stick it out and scrape the milk and curl it back into his mouth. I like my way better. Well, I don't care. Cats don't drink milk through their whiskers anyway. Beachy did. Okay, Beachy drank milk through his whiskers. They treating you all right here? I like Mrs. Conwell. Her hands are scratchy, but I like them. Like Mommy's hands. It won't be much longer. I almost got enough money. I may not come for a night or two, Susie. They almost caught me today. Joby, we've missed you. Have you eaten? We're gonna paint your room, Joby. Bertie! Thursday. There's a girl named Marcy who does her hair. You know what Marcy had to do before she could put a comb to my wife's hair? She had to go to school for seven months, serve an apprenticeship, pass a state examination, and plunk down hard money for the license. Well, let me ask you, how much study does it take to become a parent? Want sugar? Uh, no. We picked the Conwells over on Buffalo. You think it bothers me that Joby rejected our choice? It bothers me. You see, his natural father was a truck driver. His mother never finished high school. So, on the face of things, nobody going nowhere. But there was one thing they weren't. They weren't amateur parents. They had a, a secret way with their kids. They made Joby self-reliant. Maybe, maybe too self-reliant. In a world where the goof-off is king, self-reliance can bury you. What did he say to you when he brought your wallet back? How do you know he brought it back? There's a bulge in your back pocket. Nothing. He said nothing. Hmm. He's really playing you. He's saving you for the big one, whatever that is. I wish I knew. For a guy who claims he doesn't know, you run on a lot. Well, he needs to respect somebody the way he respected his father. I wish it could have been me, but... See, he blames me for picking the Conwells. It's not that I need his respect. He needs to give it. If not to me, then to some other man. lost his mother and father in May. They were fishing for Benita in the Gulf, trying to set a better table. Take my 
Now those rent them by the hour skips, squall caught them. Later on Hartry Island, they found the hull with the Benito attached to it, but that was all. I've got to get back to work. Mr. Corelli. I can't get him out of my mind. Styles, before you volunteer, let me tell you about the Conwells. They're decent, ordinary, run-of-the-mill people. Never hurt each other nor anybody else. They have no kids of their own, strong motors for wanting to love children, other than the 40 bucks a month from the welfare department. So I moved Joby and Susie in. Susie is his sister. Joby took it for two weeks, and he ran away one night after what happened to the towel. You see, he had been out in the garage, greasing a bicycle gear. When he finished, he went inside, wiped his hands on a clean white towel. I think he did it deliberately as a kind of a test. Anyway, sat down, ate his dinner, and waited for the explosion. Well, there wasn't any explosion. So he went back to the bathroom to see if they'd found that dirty towel. It wasn't there. And in its place was a fresh one, folded, waiting for him. Just clean and shining forgiveness. I can just see Joby standing there, glaring at that clean towel, thinking of the scene between the two people, like, let's show him our love. Let's, let's be nice. Let's pretend it never happened. So he cut out and he's been a fugitive for three months. The Conwells are still confused. They can't see what they did that was wrong. If you'd been my kid, I'd have belted him. It might surprise you to learn some people actually prefer using a door. 184. My dad could name them all, starting with Helmots and ending with Xenophanes. Pretty smart. Drove a truck, but he knew more than all the teachers I ever had. How far is it to the nearest galaxy? Where can I drop you? You didn't answer me. Well, I figure a kid who knows how many craters are on the moon already has all the answers. There's a beer parlor on Highway 181. Drop me there. As a matter of fact, I am. Can I bring you something? Oh, that's okay. They know me. Hi, George, Fred, Dimples. Hey, fellas, look who's here. Hi, Jubby. I'll have a beer. How much did they pay you? Didn't fool me for a minute. I heard every word you said. You tried to turn me in. 
In here, buddy, we don't go outside to settle it if we got a beef. We do it right here on the spot. Joby, what is this? He's tough. He'll take two of you. <laughs> Carry him out. I'm only telling you what he told me. He only fights two guys at a time. Okay, they do what? got a sweet left hook. Your footwork's better than Dad's. You're right, Cross. Nah, he would have taken you, I think. Anyway, that's one I'd love to have seen. Better than Dad's, huh? He always took them two at a time. Okay, Joby. Suppose I manage to get it. Where do I find you? You've got to get it. Don't let anybody else get it. You promise? Promise. I gotta go now. Joby, I know where there's a spare bed at my hotel. Your ribs any better? Ah, those two guys weren't so tough. Don't forget, tomorrow, ten sharp. You promised. Next is lot 616, consisting of four sealed barrels, which I'll sell separately, a living room and a bedroom suite, Sold by the room and a very valuable telescope. All the proceeds of lot 616 are to be turned over to the welfare department for deposit in a special trust fund for the surviving children of Charles and Sarah Paxton, recently deceased. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very valuable telescope. It's been appraised at $350. With it, you can watch the stars and you can watch your friends and neighbors and kiddies at play. What am I offered for this valuable telescope? Do I hear $100? Do I hear $100? Do I hear $50? $10. I have 10. I have 10, one or 20, one or 20, one or 20. Got a 10, one or 20, one or 20, one or 20. 15. I have $15. Thank you. I got a 15, one or 20. Got a 15, one or 20, one or 20, one or 20. Got a 15, got a 20. I got a 20, one or 5. I got a 20, one or 5. Got a 25 back there. You're out of one or 30. I want a 30, I got a 25 back there. I want a 30, want a 30, want a 30, want a 30, want a 30. I have a 30, want a 5. I have a 30, want a 5. I got 35 now, 40. 
want a 40, want a 40, want a 40, want a 40, 40. got a 40 dollars, now a five. Got a 40, want a 45, got a 45, now a 50. Got a 45, want a 50, 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 got a 45, want a 50, want a 50. 50. I've got 47, 50, now a 50. 4750, want a half, want a half, got a half. We got a fifty dollars, want a five, want a five, want a five, want a five, 55. got a fifty-five, you're out back there, sir. Got a fifty, now want a sixty. Sixty-five. Uh, sixty-five, now we're going, got a sixty-five, now seventy. You got a sixty-five, want a seventy, want a seventy, want a seventy. Got seventy dollars, want a seventy-five. Got a seventy, want a seventy-five, 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 seventy-five. Eighty-five. Got eighty-five dollars, we're rolling now. I got 85, 190, 190, 190, 190. Got 85, 190, 190, 190. Got 85, 190. Got 85, 190, 190. Going over here for 85 dollars. Going for 85 dollars. All through. Going once for 85. Going twice for 85. Sold. 85 dollars. Next, we'll sell one of these barrels up here, folks. These barrels with contents. We don't know what's in them. They're sealed. They were brought in here for storage. Todd Styles, Viking Marina Inn. Where are you going to meet him? Styles. When can I pick that up? Uh, right after the auction, sir, barrel. I would say I it'll be five, about 11 o'clock. Do you know how many craters there are on the moon? I have 10. Who'll make it 25? Who'll make it 25 dollars? I've got 15 back there. I've got a 15, one 20, got a 15, one 20. Susie. Hey, Joey, you're coming to Come on, come on, Joey. Come on. 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 Come Listen, Susie, it's Sunday, for sure. Don't keep till Sunday. Can't you come by tonight? No, we're leaving Sunday from Robstown. That man you met the other day, he didn't turn out to be the one. We'll find out Sunday. If he's the one, we'll go with him. If he's not, we'll get on the bus. But you better start packing tonight. But don't let Mrs. Conwell catch you. She's gonna cry when I leave. You only take one doll, you hear? That's all. We can't go lugging a bunch of dolls around. You don't know anything. I haven't played with dolls for years. So how come you got them all over that room she gave you? Joby? Yeah? Do you think we're doing right? Don't you remember anything Dad and Mom taught us? But I know the Conwells love us. Is that all you want is to be loved like one of your old dolls? But I'm only a child. That's right, a child, not a doll. Will you tell me about Beachy whenever I ask you? And Buff, how he ran under the car? And Chirper? Beachy's dead. Buff's dead. Chirper's dead. I don't want to talk about him ever again. I only asked you because I thought it made you feel better to talk about them. I'll pack, and I'll only take one doll. I think I'll take Jam Jam. OK, then it's set. I don't like to hurt Mrs. Conwell, but it's more important I help you, Joby. I have to look after you. I have to go where you go, because you need me. Only Jam Jam! presents. I want to pay for it. Okay. Twelve dollars and twenty-five cents. Show me the receipt. You think I'm cheating you? 
You think maybe it was only 10 bucks? I trust you. I'll give you the money Sunday morning. Is that all? Okay, I'll get it now. I was waiting for a nice little word like thanks. I'm sorry. Thanks. Oh, where is it? My room. Can we get it now? <laughs> North of here's a town called Robstown. How'd you like to drive me over Sunday? What's in Robstown? Only the highest hill in Texas, that's all. As soon as it gets dark, I can get up there and really give that telescope a workout. You don't have to stick around, just drop me off. Joby, I drove through Robstown on the way here. It's flat. Susie lives there, my sister. I want you to meet her. Let's go now. OK. There's a bus station there, and a bus that leaves at 10 past 11 Sunday morning. If I can't make it, if I have a date or something, I'll uh, give you a taxi fare, going away present, OK? You think it's nice for a little girl to go away on a trip without somebody to say goodbye to? If the bus leaves at 10 past 11, what time do we have to leave here? Dial, there's a fellow here to see you. No, I couldn't do it. But what choice do you have? Joby's already made the transference. You've become the boy's father, at least in his mind. And Styles, even if you wanted to, we couldn't let you adopt him because you don't have the qualifications. So face it, it can come today, tomorrow, next week, but it's going to come. He's going to ask you to take him away. What are you going to say to him then? What do they call the ones that lead the others into the shoot? Judas sheep? He already asked me. Sunday morning at 10. There's a service station between the Harbor Bridge and the Causeway. Stop for gas. I'll take it from there. Where? Where are you going to take it? What happens to this kid when you put him in a bag? You know, Stiles, there's a saving grace about a dilemma. You can't get tossed on more than two horns. See you Sunday morning. gave you was tip money from a bowling alley. I didn't cop it. I earned it. Here, you keep this. It'll be safer. No, you keep it. It'll be more fun if you keep it. Well, it's almost 10. What do you think? You'll see. He won't let us get on the bus.
Yeah, this Bay Air is just what I need. Saturday night. I shouldn't drink so much. I can never remember anything after the second bottle. Uh, remember, Susie, the night we couldn't find Dad? And all the time he was passed out on the garage floor. I can't even remember the girl's name. That's the terrible part. Mommy was very upset. Not for long. Every girl you meet, you think, uh, maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one I'll marry. You know, every new girl you say hi to, you might be saying hi to your future wife. But after a few hundred how-do-you-do's and pardon me's, I begin to wonder. Maybe it isn't a girl. Maybe it's me. You know, some guys just are cut out to be married. They just keep rolling around the country from pillar to post, gathering no moss. My dad loved to travel, too. Why, he drove that old truck of his from coast to coast. Joby. I don't even have a home. But that's the way I like it. Free as the wind. That's the way I'm going to keep it. Well, maybe you need somebody to care about, somebody to look after. I've already got that. Me. Why don't you just come right out and say it? Just say you don't want us. Your brother said he just wanted me to drive you down there so you'd have somebody to say goodbye to. You knew better. I could feel it. Why don't you be honest? Why don't you admit it? Why don't you tell us why you don't want us? Okay, Joby, I'll be honest. I thought about it, and I thought about it, and it just couldn't work. So right now, I'm not taking you to Robstown. I'm not taking you to the bus. I'm taking you to Corelli at a gas station on the other side of the bridge. And as long as it's honesty you want, that telescope in your bag wasn't $12.25. It was $85. I just couldn't betray them just like that. Bring them here. So I tried to make things easier for them, and I betrayed them even worse. I took something delicate and beautiful, and I smashed it. By trying to be a nice guy, I smashed it. So, now you're one of us. That's it? Now I'm one of us, and that's the end of it? Maybe we never had a chance. Either one of us, even from the start. Maybe no adult has a chance with a kid. They keep testing us and testing us. We keep failing them until they grow up. They stop testing. Joby's mother and father, they didn't fail. You can count them on one hand. What about Joby and Susie? Somehow. 
Somehow it gets to be tomorrow. Film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.